Oh, there's a new message in that streaming group I'm in. Um, I used to have ADSL. What, what, why are they all saying you can't stream? That's rubbish. Okay, in case you couldn't tell, some of those names were made up. All right, okay, all of them were made up. But it was based on a real conversation thread that I saw in a forum that I'm part of. And it made me sad and kind of angry, really, because all of these people were just saying, no, you can't, rather than saying, well, here's how you might be able to. Because, yeah, there is a shred of truth to what they're saying. It will be difficult. It will take compromise. But you can stream on ADSL. You can totally stream on ADSL. I was streaming for nine months on ADSL before I switched over to Fibre. And just think of all of the connections I wouldn't have made if I'd waited nine months. All of those friends I've made through streaming as well. And on all the experience I've built up. Now, where we live, we've actually had super fast broadband available to us for years. So staying on ADSL was a choice. Whereas Naomi Newby, as we're calling her, didn't have any other choice. ADSL is the only internet she's likely to have for at least the next few years at the time of recording. So to say, no, you can't stream is unfair as well as being incorrect. But yeah, as I mentioned, there will be compromise. You will have to be smart about how you use the limited bandwidth that you have. And the way I was gonna break it down was like this and to, you know, talk about all of these sections separately. And I will mention them, but there's no point in doing each one on its own because the most important thing is deciding what type of content you'll be doing. And I'm not saying you have to decide on one type of content and do that forever. No, I just mean that you have to decide before each stream, uh, plan it a little bit better what you're going to be doing. Because for example, I did some retro streams at the start, partly because I didn't have a graphics card at the time. That's another story. Uh, but I did some retro streams with Sonic the Hedgehog and I thought, well, it's low resolution, it'll be fine. But because there was a lot of movement, the entire scene, the entire background of Sonic the Hedgehog was moving all the time. So then I had to be even more careful with the bandwidth because it ate up a lot of it. So think about how much is moving in your scene. If it's just me doing a just chatting scene, I actually managed to get away with 720p resolution, 30 frames a second, which is HD. It's not full 1080p, sure, but 720p, I could broadcast HD as long as it was just me, just this bit moving and the background was staying relatively stable, relatively still. If you're doing an art stream, similarly, if it's only your hand moving, as long as you don't move the paper around too much, or the tablet, or the model that you're making, or whatever you're doing, as long as you remember maybe to plan it a bit more and just stay still every so often, because if you have moved around excitedly, <laughs> talk with your hands like I'm doing, uh, move things around with both hands, you might just need a couple of seconds for that image to stabilize. But you don't need to be drastic with your resolution, you know, a top tip, that I found that helped me with my streaming when I was on ADSL is to stream at 480p. And that worked for faster games and where there was a lot of movement going on. But there's no need to hammer your resolution if you're not gonna be moving very much. The next thing you want to do is choose the software encoder. I'll explain more in a minute about why you need to do that. But I'm using OBS software. Um, other software will be similar. I'm clicking file, settings going into the output and then in the streaming encoder settings I'm choosing software brackets x264. Now you might be saying at this point, hold on Jim, all of these websites that I've been reading say that you should use a hardware encoder if you've got one, especially if you've got NVENC, if you've got an NVIDIA graphics card. Why, why are you telling me to use the software encoder which will use more CPU when I could be using a hardware encoder which is dedicated hardware on the graphics card? Well, yeah, if you've got dedicated hardware Generally, you should use the hardware encoder rather than the software encoder. But in your case, if you're watching this, I'm assuming you've got ADSL, you just simply don't have the bandwidth. Hardware encoders are designed for high bandwidth where you, you've got so much bandwidth to play with that you don't mind losing a little bit of quality because there's so much bandwidth that you can just up the bandwidth to make up for it. Whereas on ADSL, you, you don't have any bandwidth. You've got 0.8 megabits per second, 800 kilobits per second maximum. And remember that in that, you've got to fit the video, the audio, and any communications that the game you're playing wants to send up and down to the server. So yeah, we're talking more like 500 kilobits you've got for your video. And if you have a look at these clips, you know, this shows you the AMD card that I had at the time, uh, which did have a hardware encoder on it, but even at the highest quality setting, you can see the difference between this and the software encoding that it uses x264. 
Now, yeah, the software encoding will use more CPU, but there's a trade-off here because you've got lower bandwidth. You don't have to use as much CPU to use the software encoder as you would if you were using the software encoder for full HD. So yeah, because it's so dependent on the type of content, that's why it didn't make sense to consider each of these parameters separately because you have to decide all of them based on the type of content. If you've got slow moving content or content where not much is moving in one go, then um, use the software encoder. Uh, encoder setting very fast to medium. Oops, I didn't show you that bit. So the encoder settings are in this bit. So if you click on the tick box, enable advanced encoder settings, then it opens up another couple of options. You've got encoder preset, and that's where you can choose it. Uh, encoder setting very fast to medium, and you can get away with almost full HD, 720p resolution, uh, 500 kilobits, maybe a bit more. I mean, I know I said you've got 800 kilobits maximum, but you might manage to push to 600 kilobits, and that'll really squeeze out as much quality as possible. Uh, set your audio bit rate to 128 kilobits, because as lots of people will tell you, and they're right, audio quality matters. And you could maybe get away with 96 kilobits, but um, it, it'll start sounding a little bit weird then. And uh, bad video is much more tolerable than bad audio or slightly off audio or, you know, slightly sort of just odd sounding. People would be like, oh, why is, it, why is it sounding all muffled maybe? They'll start to notice 96 kilobits. It might be okay, but they'll start to notice. Wait, hang on, what? Where did we set all these extra <laughs> extra things? Uh, I'll show you. Uh, you need to click on file settings again. You'll get to this window, you click on video, and then it's this output scaled resolution that you need to change. 1920 by 1080 is full HD, uh, 1280 by 720, and any resolutions lower than that are the ones you're going to want to go into for any fast moving content. If you're playing any FPS games particularly, it's still going to be blocky, but it's going to be watchable. And again, if your audio is good, it'll still be an enjoyable stream, it'll still be an interactive stream. Uh, set your encoder somewhere between fast and slow, but if you set your encoder slow, remember that means that uses more CPU. So if you have literally a slow PC, a slower PC, then uh, slow might be too taxing for it. It certainly taxed my system quite a lot. You don't want to go any lower than that in the encoder setting, certainly. You might have to stick at medium. Video resolution, what worked for me is 480p. You might even want to go to 360p. So you're looking in that, in that list in OBS, for the one with 360 as the second number after the X, after the multiply symbol. Uh, Bitrate 500 kilobits, although what I found, because certain games were trying to communicate so much and they need a certain amount of upload bandwidth as well, uh, sometimes they complain, like Rocket League would come up with a little speedometer, which I thought at first I didn't know what it was, and I realised, ah, it's because of lag and bandwidth. So you might find you have to reduce this to 400 kilobits or even 300 kilobits while you're playing games. Then it will get a bit blockier. But again, it was still watchable because I'd set the encoder setting a little bit slower, which is actually better quality. It sounds counterintuitive enough. Audio bitrate the same, but again, if you're trying to shave every little bit of bandwidth you can, then maybe drop it to 96 kilobits. It will sound a little bit muffled, but if you're in the middle of gameplay, maybe if you've got a lot of you know bass sound going on, maybe it won't be noticeable, it won't be as noticeable, I'm not sure. And then what other tips do I have? Oh yeah, uh, you won't be able to download games and stream at the same time, not reliably anyway. I know that sounds strange because you think, well, I've got plenty of download bandwidth. ADSL doesn't have a problem with download bandwidth. I've got like, well, when I had ADSL, it was about 10 megabits. You know, it, it was higher, but you'd get at least 10 megabits per second download. So why is that a problem? Well, because in order to download a game, the thing that's downloading the game still needs to upload a little bit and remember you've only got a little bit left by the time you've got 500 kilobits for the video you've got 128 kilobits for the audio and then you've got the game trying to communicate and fight for that bandwidth as well there's not much left so even a little bit of communication just to just to coordinate the game download can completely throw things skew if so yeah download all your games in advance partly because the patches are so big now anyway that even your download bandwidth might be an issue on ADSL. Uh, and then what other tips, let's think. Uh, oh yeah, and when you're about to raid, if you're on Twitch, that's not currently a, a thing on YouTube, but I don't know, uh, you, you're going to struggle to watch video, and this is for the same reason, you're going to struggle to watch another channel, whether it's Twitch or YouTube, while you're also streaming. Because, again, it's that fact that even though it's mainly download, to synchronize the download and to, and to actually 
you know, keep the streaming in step and, and the computer's trying to request the next bit of video, it's sending a little bit of upload all the time. And that's fighting with everything else for your bandwidth. So yeah, you wanna, you wanna give OBS the easiest job or whatever streaming software you use, you wanna give it the easiest job you can by stopping it having to fight for what little bandwidth there is left. It is a challenge, it is a compromise, but it's totally doable. And I'm so glad I didn't listen to anyone who said, yeah, sorry, you probably won't be able to stream. Because I learned so much. And I learned so much about optimizing my system as well, which made it even better. Then when I did finally make the switch to fiber, my system was very finely tuned and uh, a lot better at, uh, you know, managing streaming and gaming at the same time because if you've seen my other videos have a, have a look through my collection of videos i've been upgrading my pc uh, social media as well have a look on there there's little videos of me upgrading it and it's yeah it's it's old hardware it's still holding its own so yeah that's that's another rant but anyway you can do it don't let anyone tell you you can't just because you haven't got this magic number of three megabits per second nonsense you can still do it just take some compromise and a bit of hard work and a bit of fine tuning. And if you scroll down to the description of the video, I will leave a link to my Twitch VOD from my last 480p stream, my last stream on ADSL, which I've saved so that you can see warts and all what can be achieved with the settings I was using. You might have to tune them slightly to, you know, to match your hardware and everything. So, so don't take them as literal. Feel free to tweak them and tune them and, and ask me questions in the comments as well. But yeah, warts and all, that is what you can achieve on a 480p resolution stream on ADSL at 0.8 megabits per second.